Welcome back. Just wanted to give you an uh, update part two on the eight Obsidian 800D case. Swap out and upgrade. As most of you know, if you watched the last video, we brought two 360 rads and have them setting up top here. Actually, I'm going to take the side case off and I'll give you guys a look. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have the two, six, two 360 rads up top. Uh, have the Black Ice GTX 360, um, just the regular one, and then we have a uh, Stealth series above it, mounted by three 120 millimeter fans. Um, did some cleanup of the tubing from the last video. Had a lot of tubes going across and cutting across each other. Unfortunately, there's still quite a bit of tubing in this layout, but I feel the design's a lot better, and also the temps are a lot better. But again, the two 360s up top, I did bring back the 240, it's down below, it's kind of hard to see, it's, the pump is now mounted underneath that lower bay, you'll also see that we rotated where the hard drives sit, so instead of the hard drives having to be accessed from the front, uh, they're now accessed from inside the case. Uh, to mount it in there, all I did was I loosened it from the way it was mounted inside the case. Be careful because down low, when you're pulling this out, there's four black pins that are holding it in place. They're not screws, they're pins. Um, I, accident, I actually just broke the pins off because you, you can't reuse them. They don't line up when you turn it sideways. Uh, and then I just tapped a couple new screws and used, uh, used some bolts to fasten it in place. Very simple, pretty easy. Um, obviously, we're still missing one of our GTX 580s. Good news, EVGA approved the RMA. So I should be having a card come mid this week. I'll get a block on that one and, uh, and pretty much finish the system at that point. But let me walk you through the rest of the stuff. Zoom in here. So we'll start with the CPU loop. Um, I don't know if you could see it, but we do have a 355 pump with an X, an X2 top, uh, or I'm sorry, X top version two. It is running half inch, doing really good. Uh, some people have said three, three inches the max you want to run with that. It's got really good pressure. The reservoir in the front, you can see the flow flowing in, so I'm not worried about it whatsoever. But from the pump, it goes into the CPU. From the CPU down into the lower part of our chipset and then to the upper part of our chipset up into the radiator and then out the radiator into our yeah, XSPC uh, reservoir. The GPU loop flows through this radiator and the radiator down below. The reason why I wanted two is just because the temps with the one radiator seemed a little high to me. Um, I know in most cases it wasn't that high, but to me I like to try to stay within a 10 Celsius delta. And I was seeing the same temps my 480s were running at um, in SLI, but just with one card. And there was a couple reasons for that. Mainly because both these upper radiators up here are being only cooled by three fans. But when previously I had six fans up here cooling the thin radiator, and this radiator was hanging off the back getting cool air they weren't sharing the same air so with that uh, obviously there was lower temperatures um, also in the last loop I had the 240 radiator which I still have again now down, down here behind these pipes it is turned on its side but what happened is is the flow the flow comes down from the reservoir down through this tube here comes down to here to the 240 goes into the top port of the 240 then it comes out of the 240 here into the pump the pump then pumps it right back up through here to the graphics card pretty soon it will just be directly to here with the second card um, the SLI bridge I'll uh, probably end up having to keep on this side only because I don't want this tube to have to stretch back any further but it flows through the card and then obviously to the large uh, radiator and then from the radiator back into the reservoir. Um, again creating a lot of cooling potential for the loop for the graphic cards. Again the card went from 31 Celsius idle 
to 24 Celsius idle. So you can't complain just by adding the 240 right down below. Also the CPU temperature dropped because the, the fluid flowing through the 360 rad right up top is cooler, making it so when the fan blows through air, it's not heating the air up as much, etc, etc. So, it's a win-win in every case. The other cool thing is, is I did inherit a new f a fan here to blow cool air across the PCB boards, which is pretty nice. That was another nice uh, addition with turning the hard drive base sideways. That's the case. It has really good flow. If you put your hand in here, I can feel air from every every which way uh, which is a good thing I mean again it's water cooled so you don't need too much flow but for me since all of the radiators are sucking their air from all the external areas except for the top one here it's good to have that good air flow uh, overall but just to break down the system we do have the Intel 980X stock 3.33 it's running at 4.6 gigahertz currently uh, temp right now is 25 Celsius, so pretty decent temps. We have the EK full coverage water, water block on EVGA's E760 three-way SLI motherboard. We have the Corsair 1866 memory. Again, I've mentioned this many times, but I swear this is just rejected memory from 2000 megahertz. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I currently have them running at 1952, or 1952 megahertz run like a champ, like a dream. They're a lot less expensive. There's some upsides to getting the faster memory uh, just when it comes to overclocking because you can run them at their normal speeds rather than overclocking the memory to get there, but I love overclocking so I don't think you actually have to do that. So You'll see we have one GTX 580 super clocked. We'll be pairing that with the second one down below. For those of you, again, who watched the previous videos, we had some transistors, small little memory on the back side of the memory that fell off. Again, EVGA already made that. Uh, we have a Silverstone 1500 ST power supply. More power than I'll ever need. The reason why I went this route was just in case I ever got a third card. Again, we have the Black Ice GTX 360. We have the 360 um, Stealth version up here and then we have a black ice t GTX 240 down below I do have fans on both sides of the 240 below I have the three fans between the 360s here the fans in the back of the case are porting cold air in again to provide nice fresh airflow through here so when these fans need the air it sucks it right through and ports out the top as you'll see, I feel cool air blowing out the top here, so that's a good that's a good sign that you have good uh, cooling. Uh, we have 220 gig solid state drive sitting in here, running in RAID zero. I have a terabyte drive down here with a 300 gig um, Raptor drive here. And got the Swift Swift Tech 655 pump down here, and I'll take off the camera so you guys can get a better view of this in here. There's a lot of tubes coming in here because the this radiator I flipped so it was facing this way with all the pipes coming out. I didn't like the way that was so I, moved, I swapped it. I don't know how well you can see but it does create quite a bit of a mess in here. But when that side panel is on you don't see it so it's not such a big deal for me. Again we have the custom cable sleeving done by Crisis Gamer at EVGA Forms. He does great work, pretty inexpensive. I would recommend him to anybody. Um, do you have inline temp sensors? So we can track the, the temperature of the cooling. Can't really see the CPU one, but it's, it's on there. And then the front of the case, have our two fan controllers and the reservoirs. like down here so but that's the system since we only have one card in there I have two screens active currently there we go but appreciate you taking the time to watch and uh, don't forget to subscribe